So this question, I've done this last time, but I think it's worth um, doing again because, uh, well, because. <laughs> This is going to be a common feature of uh, many of the questions in this set, which is that um, they involve mechanical, tedious calculations that once you set it up, then it's kind of a matter of just working it through. So it asks for find the normalization constant. All right. So the question itself actually uh, tells you what to set up. That's the hint. Um, so you set that up. The expression that you have to evaluate um, is from negative infinity to infinity of this uh, expression, psi absolute value squared. What it is is a psi complex conjugate times a psi dx. And I'm going to apply a little bit of simplification because for negative values of x, um, psi is a zero. So this integral really simplifies to, um, so I can, it, my function is piecewise defined. I can imagine splitting my integral from negative infinity to zero and then zero to infinity. And the integral from negative infinity to zero is gonna vanish, it's gonna be zero. So the only part that I actually have to evaluate is from zero to infinity. And as I plug in the value of, or the expression of psi, what you will see is that this portion is real. So complex conjugate won't do anything. And this portion is complex, but see how this works out. So the function itself looks like uh, e to the i minus i times, I'm just going to, collectively call the rest of phi as a function of e and t. Um, and when I multiply that with its complex conjugate, e to the plus i phi, they are going to cancel out. So, um, so this uh, complex conjugate times the function itself, that's going to end up being the real part squared, a squared, x squared, e to the minus uh, alpha x squared is going to become 2 alpha x and uh, the the e to the complex phase factor is just going to cancel out so I won't bother writing it down so, times dx. So that's the integral I have to evaluate and once I evaluate the integral what that's going to equal to is I set it equal to 1. And by setting equal to 1, I find what my a is. Um, for the evaluation of integral, I won't um, do it <laughs> by hand. I think it might be doable by hand. You use, I mean, it is doable by hand. You use uh, integration by part, I think. Um, I guess you could also do integra uh, integrating by differentiating under the integral sign, but I'll save that for another question. Uh, here, I'm just going to use one of the computer algebra system, uh, one that uh, kind of free, available even offline, is a Sage Math. I'm using the online version, but you can also um, do this uh, offline. So let me type in the code for evaluating this integral. I need to declare my variables. And uh, when I was testing it out, <laughs> it turns out I have to uh, enter some uh, parameters. So say that alpha is greater than zero. And let's see here. Oh, integrate from uh, x squared times exponential of minus alpha times x. Oh, minus 2 alpha times x uh, from uh, x, with respect to x from x equals 0 to uh, infinity and I think that's right let me click on evaluate and let's see what we get oh one time error what did I do wrong Is alpha? Oh, um, it's not assuming. It should have been assume. 
All yeah. right. Okay, so that's the result. Um, so the integral here, when you finish evaluating. So I, when I did this uh, computer algebra system stuff, I factored out a squared. So it's going to be a squared times 1 over 4 alpha to the third power is equal to 1. So when you solve for a normalization constant, it will be uh, square root of 4 alpha to the third power. So that's for a. Um, I want to do the uh, plugging in the numbers. You can do that on your own. <laughs> and um, one thing that I do see gives me confidence in the solution is so for this uh, for this evaluation of the exponential to work out, my a should have unit of inverse meter so that a times x turns out to be unitless. So a has unit of inverse meter, uh, which means a sorry alpha has a unit of inverse meter. So alpha to the third power should have unit of um, unit of meter to the uh, minus third, and take the square root. So that matches the unit here, meter to the minus three half. So so the, everything is probably correct. <laughs> All right, uh, let's look at part B. Find the probability that the particle can be found on the interval 0 to uh, zero to L. So, so this pairs up with uh, what we did in part A because what we did in part A is what we got by imposing that. Um, so this quantity here, the absolute value squared. This is my probability density. It's uh, showing the probability that particle is within um, from uh, coordinate x to x plus dx. That's uh, what this is. And in order to make that probabilistic interpretation work, we impose this condition so that when you integrate over all space, it becomes it becomes uh, one. That's what we've done. So having found, so that's uh, what we've done. When we we normalize this uh, probability density in part A. So having normalized in part B, what we can now find is all right. Uh, we know the normalization constant. So um, so over all space, we have 100% chance of finding the particle somewhere. Now the question is, what is the, um, what is the probability? It's uh, within certain interval. So to calculate that, you just uh, um, calculate the, the area under the curve, or the curve being absolute value of psi squared, or uh, psi squared, that is absolute value squared, uh, over the interval. Here, the question gives the interval of 0 to L. Yes. So that's it. Um, you plug in the, the expression for A that you found in A, um, find, found in part A. Then uh, let's see here. Let me do some of the simplification in my head. So I get this coefficient 4 alpha to the third power. And this is going to be an integral from 0 to L being 1 over alpha. 1 over alpha. Um, oh, let me scroll up a little bit. x squared. e to the minus 2 alpha x dx. I do the same simplification that um, I did the last time. So. Um, all right, uh, I think I'm going to do this integral using, um, wait, sorry, why am I writing equals 1? So it's not equal to 1, and the question is asking me to find that. So um, uh, let me do this integral the same way as before. So I think I can just take this and modify it a little bit. So 
uh, instead of going from x equals 0 to infinity to going from x equals uh, 0 to 1 over alpha everything also stays the same and um, oh I think I want to simplify that so let me put it through a full simplify I think that's the right function name uh, maybe it's without underscore <laughs> I don't use sage maths all that often all right um I think maybe what I need to do is let me put this into solution and I think I can do solution for simplify okay all right that looks uh, rather complicated I wonder if it'll simplify better if uh, yeah you know I, I think it's gonna simplify better if I multiply by 4 alpha to the third power because I'm seeing this yeah so let me do it this way I'm gonna do um, solution times 4 times alpha to the third power and I think it's gonna be a numerical thing uh, let me double check uh, let me do a full simplify again. Yeah, that's uh, totally numerical. So let me just uh, put this through n. Um, I think n is the function that uh, uh, gives me the numerical approximation of the result. So yeah, 0 0.323. That's the numerical answer. 0 0.323. Oh, let me submit it and make sure I'm on the right track. Yeah. <laughs> um, and and yeah uh, that's it uh, so as i was saying at the beginning these questions are rather simple um what's uh, potentially complicated is that, that uh, it's uh, asking for integral of non-trivial expressions but um, if we use computer algebra system then that's pretty easy really the part that uh, takes the most effort is is uh, the setting up the necessary expressions all right so let's keep going with part c so it asks for find the expectation value of position so in lecture we covered expectation value quite a bit so just gonna rely on that and just to uh, write down this expression for expectation value and just to uh, work my way through so the expression for expectation value it's uh, over the whole all space so it's technically from negative infinity to infinity but i'll simplify it um, the psi complex conjugate times the operator in which case in this case this is just the multiplication by x times the wave function itself the um, and integrate it with respect to dx that's my coordinate variable x do mind the two different ways in which x means in this particular representation and um, i'm going to do the same simplifications again because when i go look at uh, my definition of psi for, in, for the negative values of x my psi is zero so I'm into my integral will simplify down to just the zero to infinity again and note how this uh, multiplication by x it doesn't really change anything it doesn't um, it has no impact on um, the wave function so all the simplifications I did before regarding the um, the complex conjugate times the function itself for the phase factor they're gonna cancel out again so when I uh, finish writing this down um, it'll really look like x multiplied to what I had before so integral of from 0 to L um, a squared I'll write that down as a squared for now and what I had before was x squared times e to the minus 2 alpha x dx. 
And really the only change here is that instead of x squared, now I have x to the third power because there's this additional factor of x multiply to the expression that I'm integrating. So, oh, and, oh sorry, it's not from 0 to L, it's <laughs> from 0 to infinity. So I'm integrating over all space again because the probability that, uh, um, yeah, so I'm not arbitrarily limiting the interval that I'm looking for the particle for. For calculation of the expectation value, you do have to do it over all space, over all possibilities. So with that, uh, I, I guess I'm going to uh, bring up my computer algebra system again and just to modify this expression as I need to. So the integral that I'm doing is going to go from x to the third, uh, x to the third power times e to the minus 2 alpha x. And x now goes from 0 to infinity again. And um, for the final calculation, OK, I don't know if uh, it's going to be um, numerical. but So I will multiply the resulting solution with a 4 times alpha to the third power. That's multiplying by a squared. And uh, and uh, I'll hope it will simplify, so I'll put it through a full simplify again. OK, so let's see what we get. Oh, that's rather simple in terms of alpha. So this uh, entire thing, when you evaluate it, is going to be uh, 3 divided by 2 alpha. Um, and the units work out because alpha has unit of inverse meter. And when you calculate the expectation value of position, you do expect the, the answer to be in the unit of meter or reciprocal of inverse meter. So yeah, plug in what alpha is. Well, that should give you the answer you know, up to the, the power of 10. Uh, and I'll leave the number plugging in to you. OK, uh, let's keep going. Oh, part D, that is. Uh, Expectation value of kinetic energy, and um, and uh, it's uh, the same deal again. You just have to um, chalk it through the expressions. <laughs> so um, it's the same basic expression that you are going to be using. Um, I guess uh, yeah. So let me just write it down first, and we'll pre-simplify it a little bit. So it's a psi. Um, yeah, the complex conjugate of the wave function times for the operator for the kinetic energy, it's going to be momentum squared over 2m times psi. And you integrate it over all space, the same as before. Um, now, one thing I do have to be careful is that, uh, let, let me write this all out. Um, I, I think here it'll actually be useful to do this. So I'll uh, try to do that. So um, since I'm writing it a lot, uh, I, I guess I will do one simplification, which is the integral is going to be from 0 to infinity. Since um, for a value of x negative, the integral will still vanish to 0. So my. Um, Complex conjugate of wave function is going to be a times x times e to the minus alpha x. And the complex phase factor is where I have to be careful. e to the plus i e t over h bar times. Uh, let me write out the form of the operator. So the the operator for the momentum is minus i h bar the so um so th this is the operator for momentum squared it should be minus i squared which will give me minus 1 h bar squared which will give me h bar squared and this differentiation operator applying twice that will give me derivative with the, res uh, the second derivative with respect to x. So 
the, that's going to be my momentum squared operator uh, multiplied by 1 over 2m. So it's going to be um, minus h bar squared uh, over 2m. And the second position derivative of the wave function again. So the, or I guess wave function for the first time before it was complex conjugate. So the wave function is a times x times e to the minus alpha x times um, e to the e to the minus i e t over h bar and do the integral with respect to uh, x. Okay, um, it looks like some things actually do simplify because the complex of phase factor, it only relates to, it doesn't have anything that depends on x. So it's not going to be changed by this uh, derivative with respect to x. So they will just cancel out. So all I'm dealing with are, let me write down a bit of a pre-simplified version. Let me factor out all the constants. So I have a squared. And then, oh, times minus h bar squared over 2n. And I think the rest are not constant. From 0 to infinity, I have x times e to the minus alpha x. And note how this time I'm not just freely moving this function around because I have this differentiation operator. So I have to be careful about the order. Um, so I have this a second order derivative with respect to x of x times e to the minus alpha x. All right. Um, I think I'm gonna, from this point on, use my computer algebra system. Uh, let's see here. So let me just do this step by step so that I know what I'm doing here. Uh, and just, I'm, I'm um, commenting this out so that for a few of my test calculations, it doesn't mess up. So I think uh, the function for differentiating is called a differentiate. Um, so I want to differentiate x times exponential of minus alpha times x with respect to x. I think that's the right syntax. Let's see. Oh, I don't know. Is, is it just a d? <laughs> Let me give that a try. No. Um, mm, I, I don't diff okay <laughs> it's a diff all right uh, that looks about right so i need to do it twice um okay so let me do it this way um so derivative of this uh, second order all right that's the second order derivative. And what I need to do is do this. Um, so I have x times exponential of minus alpha times x. That's my first part of the function. And I have the second order derivative of that same function, which is here. And I'm going to integrate it with respect to x from zero to infinity, all the while assuming that uh, my alpha is greater than zero. Um, and I, I think I'm gonna uh, take the resulting solution and do multiply it by four times alpha to the third power, that's my a squared. And let me actually multiply it by minus one as well. And um, so that'll, I'm hoping that'll give me some kind of a positive expression and I'll multiply that by h bar squared over 2m. That'll be my final answer. So evaluate. Oh, alpha squared. 
all right, that was <laughs> remarkably simple. Uh, <laughs> that, uh, I guess, uh, yeah, sometimes quantum mechanical calculations just uh, work out that way. After you do a lot of tedious work, so it's h bar squared over 2m times alpha squared. Uh, after you do a lot of tedious work, it um, ends up being <laughs> relatively simple result. I, I think that kind of simple result is what tells you you must have done something right. Um, you know, uh, for this, let me plug in the numbers just to uh, make sure that I did it right. Oh, wait, it says leave your answer in terms of H, M, alpha, and other. Oh, so I guess I'll do that. Um, so it's going to be alpha. Uh, let me make sure alpha is one of the variables. Okay, alpha squared times. And I, I have to be careful with the H bar because the system doesn't recognize H bar. So I had to write it down as H over 2 pi. That's the only way it'll recognize it. Uh, squared divided by 2m. Okay, that should be it. All right, so that's the result.